what is going on guys welcome back to the channel welcome to a new video in this video we are going to continue the ufo experience series so let's dive right into it this happened in my early to mid 20s i can't remember the exact you know age that i was when this happened and what else was going on in my life at the time but i do remember vividly the experience that i heard someone pulling up so there's a handful of these fields near my house in California where I would always and I still do take Luna to walk or to run or to just get out of the house. So sometimes certain fields, there's a ton of people there and I don't really, really like being around a whole lot of people. Um, I just don't. That's my thing. I like isolation and I like being away from large crowds. So one day I took Luna in the Volvo to a nearby field that I frequent and I noticed that there was people everywhere, kids playing baseball, other dogs on the field, and I just went, you know, this isn't, I'm not doing this. So I went to one of my other backup fields, about a five minute drive from the field that I just told you about. And when I got there, I noticed that there wasn't a single soul there. No one. The baseball fields were empty. It was just a big old green lawn and me and Luna to ourselves. It was great. So I walk her across the pavement, you know, there's a parking lot, then there's the pavement, and then there's this giant field. So we walk along the pavement to get to the field. I unhook her, unhook her from the leash, excuse me, if I can speak today. And I start throwing the ball for her with one of those chuckets, long kind of plastic stick that you put the tennis ball in and you throw it. When Luna was younger, that was her thing. She could go for at least two hours a day just running, if not more. But um, she doesn't really do that anymore. She's older. She just likes to run or, or walk around and kind of sniff things nowadays. You know how things are when dogs get older. But uh, we got to the field. Luna was off the leash. After about five minutes of running, I noticed when I looked over at her, she kept looking up at the sky. And I kind of just disregarded it at first. She kept looking up at the sky. There wasn't any noise being made above me. So I didn't really think, oh, maybe there's an airplane up there. I thought maybe she was just, you know, maybe she caught a, a scent. Maybe, who knows? I didn't really think, okay, why is Luna looking up at the sky? Because again, I didn't hear an airplane, so I didn't compute that. I didn't think to look up, oh, maybe it's an airplane. I just thought she was jumping around being a dog, right? Well, she wouldn't leave the area in the middle of the field where she was doing this. And eventually she started jumping up, putting her front legs up and staying on her back feet and jumping up and barking at the sky. So I walked up to her and looked up. And to my surprise, ladies and gentlemen, there was a giant blue tube that was probably 25 feet long. I don't, I, you know, I, I would estimate that this thing was probably five feet wide, give or take. I'm not 100% sure, but this thing was floating completely quiet through the air, wasn't making a single noise, it had no wings on it, no thruster. Again, it made no noise, you guys. It was just a tube, like a pencil, but, or like a pen, but it didn't have a point on it. It was just a cylinder. This blue, baby blue cylinder inchworming its way through the sky. And looking back in hindsight, I find it really interesting that whatever this thing was, it was a very similar color to the blue sky. So was that some type of cloaking technology? Was that some type of camouflage? Well, it makes sense that it, I mean, it would be kind of be hard to say that it wasn't, right? This thing was completely, again, noiseless. It made no noise. And it was the same damn color, almost identical to the sky that it was moving through. And I don't think, honestly, if Luna wouldn't have jumped up and made that noise, I don't think I would have seen that, that cylinder. Because if you're just kind of glancing at the sky, I don't think you're just going to notice something that's the same color as the sky. But I could see the outline of this tube. I could see where it was curved, thanks to Luna. Um, I looked up and didn't just glance. I looked up and was like, what? What are, you, what are you barking at? And boom, there it was, this tube. So what was it that made Luna bark? What what was it that made Luna see or become aware of this thing when it made no noise? I've always pondered that. It's like, okay, what the hell was that thing putting off where my dog could pick up on it, even though the thing made zero noise, yet I couldn't pick up on it? Catch my drift? So I've had so many UFO experiences 
over the past 10 years. And one thing that I've noticed, you guys, is that oftentimes these things are just right above us, but we don't hear them. We're not looking up. Or they're camouflaged with the environment. And the, this blue cylinder is a perfect example of that. So we sat there, or I sat there, and stared at this thing for probably 45 seconds before I couldn't kind of like sense Luna around me anymore. So I freaked out and looked around to see where she was and she was behind me. And by the time I looked up, the thing was gone. So these things happen all the time. What these crafts are, I'm not sure. And you know, to the people who say that I'm fibbing or that I'm lying about these experiences, what do I have to gain by coming on here and being honest with you? about these experiences that I've had with unidentified flying objects. There's no point in me coming on here to make shit up. You know, there really just isn't. I've had a handful of experiences with the supernatural, with the paranormal, with the occult, all these things, and I'm just here to share them with you. And, you know, believing that something like this can't happen just because you haven't had an experience with that is foolish. Things that are unexplainable happen to people all the time, folks. Every single day, within every hour, it's happening constantly. We live in a supernatural realm here, folks. So, man, it's just, it really is incredible. The, the, the euphoria also that you feel when you have one of these experiences. And also the shock, because you know that, okay, most of the people that I tell this to, this story, they're probably not going to believe me and they're probably going to think I'm quacked out or this, that, and the other. And that, that's been the case. That's been the case. The majority of the people that I share these experiences with, they kind of give you that, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure you saw that, you know, that kind of look, that fluoride stare, but it is what it is. You know, millions of people haven't had these experiences because it's in their head, because it's some fantasy to lie to people or this, that, and the other. Sure, there's people that make stuff up, but guys, these unidentified flying objects are fucking real. Whether they're, you know, commanded by aliens, whether they're reverse engineered technologies being tested by the government, whether they're spy drones, I'm not 100% sure. I do, however, know that these things happen. They happen on a daily basis, and they've happened to me multiple times. I've had over 20 experiences with UFOs. Over 20. I'm not going to lie. I'm probably over 40 experiences because there were multiple experiences where there was more than one craft in the experience. Does that make sense? So, like, when I was in Clear Lake, California, there were nights where I'd go out on my balcony and see Dudley, see things that would sit motionless in the in the air that twinkled like stars. I would watch them. I'd be like, you know, is that a satellite? And I'd watch it and... It, a set, suddenly it would freeze in midair and start to twinkle like a star. And I'm thinking satellites don't pause. These things would inchworm through the sky in a perfect arc and then pause and then sometimes fly down or up or just disappear or shoot off into the sky. Sometimes two lights would merge together, become bright, and then disappear or shoot off in two different directions. Folks, those aren't satellites. Those aren't airplanes. Those aren't helicopters. Aircraft can't make sudden, you know, sharp turns like that. It doesn't They are not able to pause in midair and be motionless. You know, I mean, a helicopter can kind of float in one situ or position and be stationary, but it's far from stationary because it's kicking wind around and it's moving. And you know what I mean? These things are perfect. Whatever they are, they're capable of doing things that defy what would we call it? Um, the laws of aeronautics? I'm not 100% sure. I'm not some expert on that stuff. But I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I have enough common sense to know that a satellite doesn't move through the air, pause, and then move upwards, downs, the other direction, merge with other lights, etc. I think there's some of these things in the sky that actually appear to be stars, but they're actually some type of light being or craft that's just sitting stationary. I've seen these things move. So anyways, you guys... I don't want to keep these over. I don't want to make these over 10 minutes long. I've got so many of them that I want to share them and I don't want them to be these long drawn out rants, right? So number two on the UFO experience catalog, may peace be with you.